and hello YouTube, this is GS Man with Smart. I'm going to a brand new video for Tutorials GS. And today we're going to be taking a look at how to record your screen, whether you're recording a tutorial in Photoshop, whether you just want to record your screen when you're browsing the internet, uh, if you want to record your video game that you're playing, if you want to do some game capture, everything is doable with this program that I'm going to be showing you. And this is actually a program that I use for all of my recording on all of my channels. Uh, this is the main program and you can also use this program for streaming on Twitch if you'd like to stream, if you do stream, you can use it. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Open Broadcast Software, also known as OBS. Now you'll see that I have it open here at the bottom. I'm using it right now and it's a really neat little uh, video uh, screen recorder that's really easy to use. It's very powerful too, allows you to do many things. I'm going to be showing you how to use it today to record videos for you to edit and upload to YouTube because originally this program is used for streaming and it will be given to you for streaming. You need to set it up in a way that you can record on your computer. So I'll be showing you how to set it up and how to get it. Now how to get it is very easily. I'll leave a link in the description below, but essentially you want to go to this website right here, open broadcast software. A link is, link is in the description. Just go ahead and click it, it'll bring you to this page right here. Go ahead and click your operating system here and uh, make sure you're on classic here or st actually studio is fine. I mean, either or really, you can go, uh, I go with classic. I don't know what really what studio is, but classic is fine. Let's just stay with classic, all right? Classic, pick your operating system. On the right here, click download OBS. Very straightforward. You'll see the download on the bottom left corner if you're using Chrome. You see the download in a pop-up window if you're using Internet Explorer or Firefox. And then just go and install. I'm not going to go through the process because the installing process is very straightforward. You just click next, next, I agree, install. That's pretty much it. Not much to it. So hopefully you uh, successfully installed it and downloaded it. If not, leave a comment below and I'll give you a hand if you are stuck somewhere if you ran into a problem. But once you have it downloaded and installed, you'll basically have the program on your computer and you can go ahead and open it like this. Now you're not going to have any of these scenes here at the bottom or any of these devices. You'll basically have two blank boxes here with nothing in them. Let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit so we don't have this weird continuous window pattern going on here. But what you want to do is your first step is to create some scenes. Now what scenes are, they're different ways of recording, well not different ways of recording, but they're different uh, windows, different sets of recording methods, whether you're recording for a game, you're recording for a specific window, you're recording your entire monitor. OBS allows you to separate all three of those into different scenes so you can pick whichever one you want when you're starting to record. There's none of this you know, pick your selection on the screen every time you want to start recording or, you know, pick the window you want to record every time you want to start recording. You're able to preset everything here, make a preset for everything so that when you want to use it, just click it and click start recording. So you only need to make these presets and these scenes once. So you see here, I have plenty of uh, different scenes here. I have my main uh, desktop recording here and I have several other games that I usually record on for my gaming channel. I have a scene set up for these as well. So right now, this box will probably be empty for you. You want to go ahead and right click it and click add scene. Go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. If you're doing this for a game capture, you may want to put it as the name of your game. If you're doing this for just a monitor or desktop recording for a tutorial, or if you're just recording your browsing, uh, your internet browsing or whatever, then just name it whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. And then go ahead and click OK. Now you'll see that my screen had went black for just a second. And that's because uh, we're recording right now, so when we create a new scene, it switches it to that scene. But you'll see that you can easily uh, switch between different scenes here, and uh, makes it very easy for streaming especially, but also when you're recording your own videos, if you're recording, say, your game, and then you want to switch back to your desktop real quick, you can easily just uh, assign a hotkey here. You can right-click and assign a hotkey for each scene, or you can just open this window up and go ahead and click a different scene and it'll start recording the different window you have assigned to it but let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Uh, right now you probably just have this scene created here right now mine's this one right here you may have a different name but you'll probably just have this right here 
And what will happen is that when you click each of these, you'll get a second box on the right here. And this second box on the right here will have all of your devices, all of your capture devices. So if you want to record your monitor, you're going to have to click monitor capture. If you want to uh, uh, capture your game, you need to click game capture. If you want to add your webcam tool, you need to click webcam capture. But essentially, you want to click your scene in the right side here. You want to right click and click add. Here you'll see we have a variety of options. We have a video capture device, which would be something like your webcam. You have a game capture device, which would be a game you're playing like Guild Wars 2 or League of Legends or whatever you're playing. That's for game capture. You can add text to your uh, recording if you want to add like a little watermark. You can do that and then position it on the top right or you know you can move it around on the screen here you're also able to put in images and you have your window and monitor capture here very standard so if you want to go ahead and uh, do a game capture of a game you're playing go ahead and click add a game capture and you can name it whatever you'd like and once again you'll have a, a window pop up here and what you want to make sure when you're doing this is make sure you have your game open and you have it running. If you don't have it open and you don't have it running, running, it will not uh, show up on this list here. So make sure you have the game running and then it will show up on this list here. You can click it and then click OK and it will basically be saved. Now be aware if you have um, a monitor capture and then a game capture as well, you're going to have to uncheck the ones you're not using. This is why I usually have different scenes for my monitor capture and for my game capture so that I don't have everything in just one scene. You want to take advantage of this because OBS does a really good job at allowing you to do all these things. Um, it's a really powerful program. So. That's how you do a game capture. If you want to do a monitor capture or a window capture, click add a window capture or monitor capture. Essentially for window capture, you want to do the same thing, select the window. And for monitor capture, um, you, you'll click your monitor if you have multiple monitors and you can just go ahead and click OK and monitor capture will uh, pop up here. So very easy to set up your scenes, very easy to set up your uh, capture devices. Now something really cool, like I said already, you can add images and add your webcam and then move it around the screen. I'll go ahead and show you a sample of that right now. If I go and add an image, and you can name your image if you want, click OK. And then here at the top, click Browse, select your image. You can change the opacity here, do all kinds of stuff, uh, change the color and whatnot. But for the most part, most of you are just going to add an image like I do. So go ahead and click Browse. Go ahead and find your image like I have right here. Once you found it, click OK. And you'll see right now we have a picture of R in here. And you can actually right click the image here and then go to position and size and you can move it to different uh, portions of the screen. So it's really cool. You can add watermarks or little logos and move them to wherever you want them to. As you see, it even updates right now when we're recording. You'll probably see this RN character on the bottom right corner of the screen like I have it here. So this is your preview right here basically. So you can add all kinds of cool stuff. And if you want to remove it, you can just right click and then click remove and click yes. So those are pretty much the basics on adding scenes and adding different devices and adding different images and stuff like that. Um, so that's basically how you set that up. Now what's even more important is to make sure that you have your microphone set up and you're, you are also able to record uh, your audio on your computer by clicking this button right here. So it's really convenient. You don't need to use Audacity to record your uh, computer volume separately or whatever. OBS records everything at once, basically, and it's really cool. So you can go and click this if you want to record or not. You can even change the volume, moving this up or down. Uh, very easy and convenient. Now the important part is to make sure to check the settings. The settings is right here. You can go and click settings, and this will open up a new window like this. Now in this first box right here, you'll just have your profiles. You can make profiles for different settings. If you're streaming, if you're um, uh, recording for a game, if you're just recording your uh, your desktop, maybe you'll have different uh, profiles, different settings. Me, I just have one set. It, I just have one profile setting right here. Uh, but you can make several different ones if you feel the need to. Now the important parts you want to look at are encoding, uh, the broadcast settings, and the video. Now, if you have some trouble with this, mostly this is fairly straightforward and simple. 
However, if you, if you don't have a powerful computer or you're lacking a good video card or you're lacking some RAM, you may have to tweak these settings to very specifically and I can easily make a video for you on that. If you are running into problems, I can make a video on how to adjust the settings properly so you're not getting so much lag if you are experiencing lag or uh, if, you, if you feel like your video quality isn't good enough, I can make a video all on its own on settings because settings is a big topic and I don't want to make this video too long. So for the most part, in your settings, you want to set your profile up and most importantly, you want to make sure you set your bit rate. Now don't set a huge bit rate like 18,000 or you know 15,000, that's ridiculous. YouTube doesn't even recognize such a high quality. And um, for the most part, most of you are going to want to upload 1080p. And 1080p, I believe, is from 8,000 to 10,000, I think. Um, they have a chart on the YouTube website. I'll see if I can link in the description below for the different bit rates. But I'm running on 8,000 bit rate, which is just fine for uploading in 1080p. Uh, you want to change your bit rate. You want to change your quality balance to 10. Um, I have it to 10. It works fine for me. And that's pretty much the important part for encoding here. And then what's really important is going to broadcast settings and making sure you have file output only selected. Don't make, don't click the stream one. Make sure you have file output only selected. And it'll allow you then to select a path here for where your videos will be saved. You want to click the browse button here and make sure you select a folder that where you want to find all your videos. All the recordings that you will do will be in this folder that you select. Now after you've selected your folder, you'll see that you can add an extension at the end. Um, I'm using .mp4. You want to add whatever extension you want. If you hover your mouse over this box, it will give you a list of different, ex uh, different extensions you can add. But for the most part, you're going to want to put .mp4 because that's the best way to upload your videos for YouTube. And it's also good for editing. You can do .avi as well if you don't want to lose that much quality while editing and you're um, rendering it again. But I'm just gonna, I just use .mp4, I like it. It's it's not too big of a file size. AVI tends to be pretty big in file size. But you can use whatever you want. Just make sure you have a dot something after that. You need to have that. If you don't have that, then you can run into some problems. And we don't want problems. So make sure you have dot something after that uh, slash there. Um, everything else you can pretty much leave the same. And the last important thing you wanna look at is video and audio. For audio, you just want to make sure you have your uh, correct microphone selected. Um, for the most part, you can click default and default, and it should be okay because you'll you'll probably have your um, microphone and uh, your speaker selected at the bottom here when you click playback devices and recording devices. Whatever is set to default here will be what you're using for default here. If you don't want to use your default stuff, then you can easily just select what you want to use here, and it will be just fine. But what's also important is video here. You want to make sure you have your correct video card selected and you want to make sure that you have your correct dimensions written here. Now for me, I have 1366 by 768, so I have that written here. You can write your own dimensions in here. And um, you can also select what monitor you want to record if you're, mo if you're recording multiple monitors. But for the most part, you just want to write your dimensions in here. Sometimes when you click monitor one, you'll see you can select different monitors if you have different monitors and you can select a, um, a preset that they have here. But if your resolution's not here, or if you just want to use custom, I'm using custom. So you can either use this one right here uh, for monitor and select one, it'll automatically uh, assign your resolution and you can pick it from down here. But I suggest you click custom here and just type in your resolution. If you don't know your screen resolution, um, you can just Google it, type in what is my screen resolution and there'll be a website there that tells you your screen resolution. I can leave a link in the description for that as well. Uh, the website that tells you your screen resolution. And you wanna type the numbers in here. After that, you wanna make sure your FPS is set to 30 or 60, depending on if your computer can handle 60, but I'm using 30 for the most part because it's been working for me. And I don't really care about too much above 30, especially for desktop recording. You don't need more than 30 FPS anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this, for the settings. You wanna make sure your audio and your video and your broadcast settings are set up and your encoding settings. And then you can click at the bottom here, apply and okay. I'm gonna click cancel because I already have it uh, set up. And after you have your settings done, you can go ahead and click start recording here. I have stopped recording because I'm recording right now, but you'll see start recording here. 
and that's pretty much it you'll basically be starting to record and your video will be saved into that folder that you designated it to be in when we did the um, broadcast settings you have a stop record button here you can preview the recording right here but I think this is only for previewing a stream and we're not streaming but I don't really use any of these other buttons here other than settings and uh, just um, stop and start recording if you click edit scene you can actually move the stuff around so if you remember how I said uh, that you can move the image around you can move the image around uh, freely you can freely move stuff around you don't, you don't need to just right click and uh, position or whatever you can move stuff around freely if you click edit scene here so that's pretty cool that you can uh, uh, very in detail uh, move things around edit your uh, recording environment with images watermarks logos all that kind of cool stuff so that's pretty much it for this tutorial if you have any questions, comment, leave in the comments section below. It's pretty easy to use once you, once you get the hang of it. But um, if you have any problems, uh, leave in the comments section. I'll definitely try to answer your questions if you have any and try to help you out. And uh, if you really want a tutorial on the best settings for recording, if you want to see my settings that I'm recording it, I don't have a very good video card, so um, I can share with you my settings if you're in that category with me. You don't have uh, that amazing of a video card. Uh, it does work though, you can use this program very easily. And that'll be pretty much it. I hopefully you enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. We have plenty of other tutorials on the channel about different software tutorials like Audacity or uh, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, video editing, all kinds of cool stuff. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't yet. And uh, leave a like on this video, please, if you enjoyed it. If it helped you out, that'd be really great. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how to videos. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too, really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.